Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Saturday. Let's talk some mountain weather. My first stop is to Vail. So this is my friend Matt Jones who lives up in the Vail Valley. Every once in a while we'll exchange um, some notes over X. He posted this photo and it really tells the story, the situation that Colorado is in and quite frankly a lot of the West right now. That's actually Vail Mountain. Now to be fair, and he took this yesterday, this is a south-southeast facing aspect, so it's going to get more sun. And this is below 10,000 feet, so it is more susceptible to warm air. But, I mean, that's the way it looks right now. You know, I think most of the back bowls, not all, most of them are still closed in Vail. Blue Sky, I think, is still closed. I'd have to check my notes, but that was the last time I had checked. I'd have to check their website, rather. Um, but, that, but that's the way it looks right now. You know, there is some improvement in the extended forecast. I will say that. Um, let me go to the numbers. Uh, so currently, the season total, not just the month, but as far as, you know, November, December, January goes, 69 inches. That's it so far. They did get a couple in the last 24 hours. Um, so things might look a little bit different up there today. And it is colder across the mountains today, but 69 inches by January 17th um, at Vail. In fact, take a look at some of the current conditions. So it is a much colder morning. This is the uh, the summit of Arapahoe Basin. Air temp is minus five and the winds are gusting to almost 80 miles per hour. So, I mean, it, it's, it's significantly colder this morning after a couple of inches of new snow up there which is good. We just, you know, Colorado needs a lot more snow. I mean, you know, places like Vail are feet in the hole right now. Feet. Wolf Creek, feet in the hole. Steamboat. I mean, all the resorts in Colorado are in the same boat right now. And like I was saying, there is snow in the extended forecast. Let me show you the pattern. This winter killer high pressure is still in control across a lot of the West. Just an incredible amount of warm dry air with those oranges and reds right there that's dry air the flow look at this curly flow it, the high is so strong it's bending this flow uh, straight north into alaska where even in alieska they were talking about rain rain snow at the base area up there and then it's coming down with this fast north flow through montana parts of montana wyoming and parts of eastern colorado Every once in a while, seeing a cold front and wind come through those areas. Let me show you my uh, bullet points. What do we got? So we've got the winter killer high pressure through about the 22nd. So it's still there. Now, like I said, on the eastern periphery, there's a weakness with this fast north flow, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, where we're seeing these quick hitting cold fronts with wind. More significantly, though, uh, 23, 24, 25, 26, there are about two cold fronts that will dive down through the central and northern Rockies and potentially overspread some of the resorts with colder air and more snow. We'll look at that in the, uh, the forecast. Before that happens, it's very warm. No surprise. Now, the 15-day snow forecast um, has gone up. So Mammoth, I've got about two feet for Mammoth. Now, that's way down the road. That's not in the immediate future, so that may change. Vail's got 14 on the way, so it does look like Vail will crack 70 inches for January. Um, Snowmass has got about 20 coming in the 15-day. Park City, 8, 20 at about Alta. Here are the specific dates or the timeline for best odds of accumulating snow. So Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, the Pacific Northwest, and Interior BC. They're the best dates. So for example, the fast north flow delivers light snow on the morning of the 17th, which is what we saw uh, happen in Colorado with a little bit of new accumulation. Another one on the morning of the 19th, morning of the 24th, uh, maybe moderate accumulations afternoon 25 and 26, and maybe moderate 29 and 30. So that's how you kind of read it. In Tahoe, again, it's a big waiting game until the 27, 28, 29 time period. Utah, afternoon, evening 23 into the morning of 24, 25, PM 28 into the morning of the 30th, moderate to heavy. I won't go through all those, but get the idea. Let's look at the forecast radar. So we'll start this up at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard 
today. Again, just a teeny tiny bit of leftover snow there uh, on the Front Range High Peaks of Colorado. Let me push this ahead in time. Okay, there's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard. Here's 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Sunday. Look what's coming from the north. There's 11 a.m. There's 10 p.m. Now there's 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Monday, January 19th. You can see this fast north flow, and there is a front right here uh, racing its way out of Wyoming through Colorado. So we, there, there could certainly be a dusting of snow, maybe an inch, uh, up around the Rocky Mountain National Park area, Cameron Pass, Winter Park, uh, Bertha Pass, Loveland Ski Area, A Basin, and maybe a little bit of snow early Monday morning around Denver and parts of the Front Range as that races through. And there it goes. Uh, then we've got, let's see, there's 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Tuesday. We'll end it right here. This is 11 a.m. Mountain Standard on Tuesday, January 20th. And it looks like there's another front kind of racing down at that point. Okay, let's talk about the time height. And I wanted to show you these little itty bitty fronts. So this is Loveland. Slice through the vertical atmosphere, all the vertical layers. 72 hour forecast, you start right here. You move in this direction into the future. So this is our leftover moisture that we see this morning across parts of Colorado. And it dries up a little bit. And then there's the next quick hitting front, late 18 um, into the morning of the 19th. So very late Sunday into the morning, mainly the morning of the 19th, uh, which is going to be Monday morning. Could see an inch at some of the ski areas. And then real dry air moves in behind that pretty fast. Atmospheric pressure anomalies up at 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. This is Monday the 19th, and you can kind of see the, the front right here. Uh, that's a cold front racing down on this fast north flow coming out of Montana, Wyoming, and then that will race through Colorado on the eastern flanks there of the Rockies. But there's your drop. There's your big center of low pressure right there. This is the 24th. So this is Saturday the 24th. Now, this is a pretty sizable drop in pressures across the west with the core right there. You, if this happens, you'd be looking at colder air and widespread snow across the central and northern Rockies with a absolute drop in temperatures for the Pacific Northwest, if this happens. And I'll tell you why I say if in a second. This is the 26th, so a continuation of this with this drop in pressures up here, your higher pressures would be out here. So that's your operational look at this. Here's AI. Here's the comparison for 126. So what do you see? A complete difference of opinion. AI has nothing but high pressure across the West with the big drop in pressures over across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast. But look at the difference, right? The operational has it flipped. So there's no agreement here, in other words, between these two scenarios, between these two models. Just something to keep in mind. That definitely hints that there may be low confidence. Okay, nine-day total precip, as if everything fell as liquid rain right here. So through the 22nd, there's basically nothing. It's warm and dry. Then the dam breaks, according to this, and everything starts to come south by the 20, late 22 into 23, 24, 25, 26. That's when we start to see the accumulation pick up. Um, here's the 10 to 1 snow. Same time period, nine days into the future. So this takes us through the 25th into the 26th, basically, through the 26th. And there, by the end, we're looking at deep purples. That's at least six. Bright pink would be at least a foot. And there's definitely some places that approach that foot mark. Um, nice accumulation in Idaho, Montana, the Tetons, a little bit into the Wasatch and some into Colorado. And then once the temperatures drop, because the freezing levels are so darn high in the Pacific Northwest, once they drop, then we start to see accumulation in the Cascades, in the high volcanoes. Southwest Vantage Point, total precip, totally dry through probably the 22nd, even maybe the 23rd. But then very late, we start to drop precip in maybe 23, 24, 25. Okay, um, here's the AI snow plume, and then I'll show you my forecast. The AI snow plume for Berthoud Pass in Colorado, 10 to 15 days out, 
So by the end of the 31st, this has about four and a half to five inches over birth had passed, with most of that falling after the 22nd. Yeah, there's a little bit with this fast north flow ahead of the 22nd, but this doesn't indicate anything significant. Um, and in Jackson, it's very similar. All of this falls after the 22nd. This has got 10 to 11 inches at Jackson Hall. Clearly a preference for the Tetons over Berthoud Pass in Colorado. Here's my forecast. So phase one is today through the 21st. And you can see where this, this storm track is running with that fast north flow. So whatever disturbances are riding down this run quickly and the accumulation is very light. Again, an inch here, an inch there. This says maybe up to three inches around Loveland Winter Park. You can see that deeper shading Cameron Pass, maybe. And maybe a little bit for Denver in the Front Range, especially on that Monday morning, uh, morning of the 19th. So that's phase one. Here's phase two. This is 122 through the 26th. Once the pattern changes, and the storm track shifts to the south a little bit and we get a dip in the jet. And then we start to see some of the pink colors come out. Once you see those bright pinks, that's a foot or more. So let's start in the Wasatch. You're pretty much on the periphery, one to four inches, nothing big. I don't have anything in, in California through the 26th. Now after the 26th, snow starts to move in. Uh, looking good up at Brundage to Schweitzer potentially double digits. Montana looks particularly good. Once the cold air comes in in those fronts, we start to see double digit accumulation. And probably about a foot up there over the Tetons through this time period. Um, and that fits, you know, that fits with, you know, AI was showing at least 10 inches. Um, and then interior BC up to six inches. Once the temps drop, the snow levels come down to a lower elevation in the Pacific Northwest, and we're seeing some double-digit accumulation. So things definitely shift. It's just going to be, we're just in a waiting uh, pattern. We're in a holding pattern right now, waiting on some sort of shift. Um, let's go to the northeast. So a couple of clippers, some lake effect. The lake effect is what's most impressive right there. You see that band coming off Tug Hill Plateau off of Lake Ontario. A little bit of uh, towards potentially Buffalo off of Erie there, uh, and quite a bit off Lake Michigan, some double-digit accumulation there through western Michigan. Storm snow, not terribly impressive, maybe up to six inches. Deep, deep purple would be at least six, bright pink would be at least a foot. Here's my forecast. So grand totals by the close of business on 126. Uh, I've got eight over Jay Peak, ten at Snow Ridge, Bunch of sixes, Whiteface, Tremblant, Stowe, maybe a seven at Mount Snow. Uh, potentially three, four, five inches uh, through Ragged down to Wachusett. Um, but it definitely stays cold in the Northeast. It definitely stays cold. All right, let's go back to the 10-day, um, well, the 9-day across the West. So again, phase one, not a lot going on, very dry, high pressure, fast north flow. Phase two is much more optimistic, 122 through 126. If I, you know, I think if we're going to see any big shifts or pivots in the pattern, it's going to be right here. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. I always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.